Okay. And um, well, I'll just open up, open us up in prayer and we'll go from there. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, Lord, I want to say thank you for who you are. I want to say thank you that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. Lord, Father, we exalt you. We exalt you high. Your word says if you be lifted, if we lift you, your word says, God, you, your word says that you be lifted. We ought you to be lifted higher and higher and higher. We ought you to be lifted and exalted, oh God. I invite, I invite you wherever you are just to magnify the name, magnify the name of Jesus, celebrate him and thank him for bringing us through this world. Thank him for sustaining us. Thank him for just taking us through the day this is i think day 16 of the flood just thank him for his sustenance for he is kind the fact there is breath in our lungs we will praise him thank you lord jesus lord i say thank you lord for all that you are i want to say thank you lord for seeing us through a new week i want to say thank you lord for your provisions for your strength oh god i want to say thank you lord for encouraging us through this fast i want to say thank you lord for the guest ministers we've had on this fast oh god I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, oh God. And Lord, as I lead this prayer, I ask you that you will help me and you will enable me by your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, um, as I said, we'll be leading on um mar marriage and, and raising children the godly way. So the first thing I want us to pray about is preparing our hearts and our mind in, in both areas. Um, I think, especially in relation to marriage, there's this especially I think mainly within like social media society there's these narratives and rhetorics that are pushed that kind of speak against marriage um these narratives that kind of say stuff like are oh, men are x y and z and independent women stuff like that or even in general that marriage the topic of marriage just may be a sensitive subject so I want us to just prepare our hearts and I want us to just cast down any false like argument or false ideology um and also I want to encourage us to stand in the gap for one another because you may be married, you may not be. But the Bible speaks about in Ephesians 16 that we should stay alert and be persistent in our prayers um, for believers everywhere. And 2 Corinthians chapter 10, um, verse 4 says, we, are, um, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments. So I just want to encourage us, I just want to encourage us to take some time to really prepare our minds and prepare our hearts for this, that we are able to not, as Tony said yesterday, not exempt ourselves or exclude ourselves from these prayer points, that we're able to push through and actually have hope and hope to trust God in this in this area of our lives. Um, Yeah, in Jesus' mighty name, Father, Lord, we just commit our minds and our hearts before you, O oh God. Anywhere we maybe have been disappointed, anywhere we have um, just lost hope in this area, we ask you that you restore it in the name of Jesus. Anytime, any, we may have seen bad examples, we may have just been absorbing um, the things from social media into our subconscious right now. And right now, we lay our minds before you, we lay our minds down before you, O oh God. We cast on all these lies, we cast on these false arguments in the name of Jesus. We ask you, O oh God, that you can do a new thing on our, in our mind. You will give us a new perspective when it comes to marriage. You will give us a new hope when it comes to marriage, oh God. You will give us a fresh and a brand new desire when it comes to marriage, oh God. I pray, Lord, where we've come, um, where we've looked at our peers and compared ourselves and put us down and even doubted you, Lord. I ask you, Lord, for your mercy and your forgiveness, oh God. We ask you, Lord, that you forgive us because we, I ask you to forgive us when we have fallen short in this area. I ask you, Lord, to just give us hope and just give us strength as we pray for these. In Jesus' name, amen. And secondly, I know that like marriage conferences are like very prevalent, especially within like women circles and stuff like that. And it's like, I've been to conferences, I've gone on dates and I'm still not married. And I know that can probably contribute to like losing hope. But again, I just want to encourage you, like, let's just go again, let's just prevail in prayer. But yes, the scriptures um, we're going to be standing on will be from Ephesians. Um, will be from Ephesians and um, I'm going to read from chapter five um, and I'll read from verse 21 to the rest of the um, to the rest of the chapter. So um, I'm going to read from the NLT version and it says that um, and, and further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of, our, of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives just as the Christ loved the church. 
I beg your pardon. He gave up his life for her to make her to make her holy and clean, washed her by the cleansing of his, washed him washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did he did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she'll be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one um, hates his no one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the body, and we are members of his body. As the scripture says, a man leaves the father and the mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is, it is an illustration of the of the way Christ and the church were one are one. So again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife um, must respect her husband. Amen. So we're going to take some prayer points. Um, just give me a second. Okay, we're going to um take some prayer points from that. And the first prayer point is that we are going to pray that wives are able to submit. Um, the amplified version in that's just in that specific um in that specific verse says that wives are to adapt themselves. Um, so we're going to pray that God is going to work on our character. Those, if whether you're married or not, we can pray this for our future. And if you're married now, you can pray that God will work on um, work on your character. And in relation to that, we're going to pray for husbands, that we're going to pray that it'll be safe for wives to submit to them. Um, I was reading Acts chapter 6. I was reading Acts chapter 6. And when they were choosing the seven, the qualifications for these men or that they were full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. So we're going to pray that these men will be full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit, and they'll be able to lead their wives in all areas. They will, they'll have the wisdom to make decisions, have the decision, may have the wisdom to manage and navigate finances, have the wisdom to just do, you know, different things that concern the fam concern the marital or family home. Um. So we're gonna, Amen. So we're gonna pray, um, concerning that in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, what I want to say, thank you, Lord, for the wives and the husbands here, even the future wives and husbands here, oh God. Right now, I just ask you to work on our character, oh God. I ask you, Lord, that you will give us the grace, the, the grace to submit in the name of Jesus. No matter what the society says that women shouldn't submit, Lord, I just ask you, Lord, that you'll give us the grace to submit, oh God, that we will hum that we'll humble ourselves and allow you to work on our character. Maybe we're aggressive, maybe we're loud. We ask you, Lord, to mold our character, that we'll look like you and reflect you in the name of Jesus we ask you oh Lord that I ask you oh God that you will soften our hearts in any area that life is hard in us oh God I ask you to just do what only you can do in our character I ask you Lord that you will make us new I ask you Lord that you will give us a new perspective when it comes to submission that submission does not make does not mean that we're slaves but it means that we are servants for you it means that we are doing we're living a, we're living the marriage that we've called us to live oh God we commit our we commit the husbands to your hands, O oh God, and we ask you, Lord, that you will fill them with the Holy Spirit and wisdom in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you will equip them with wisdom to make decisions, O oh God. Make them give them wisdom that will not put the family in detriment, that will not put themselves in detriment, O oh God. We ask you, Lord, that any um mistakes that may have meant may have been made in um like the marital home and stuff like that. We just ask you, Lord, that you will just give them. You will just have um, mercy on them. You will ask them that their wives won't hold it against them, but they won't hold it against themselves. We ask you, Lord, that you'll give them a new perspective also in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And um, in regards to, um, yeah, the next prayer point was that husbands shall love their wives. Amen. Husbands shall love their wives as Christ loved the church. So, um. For me, this creates a standard. The fact it says, as Christ loved the church, this is a standard. So um, the message version says that husbands go out, husbands go all out um, in your love for your wife, as Christ did, as lo um, a love marked by giving and not by getting. His words um, evoke her beauty. Um, <laughs> um, everything he says um, and does is, de is designed to bring the best out of her. So we're going to pray that... <laughs> Okay. so I was thinking about this actually I know that women not even women everybody has their own like yeah I like it too um women have their own um 
people have their own ways of being loved but I just pray I want us to pray that we're able to meet each other's needs we're going to pray that men husbands and specifically are able to outdo their wives in love and that's based on Romans chapter 12 verse, and verse 10 um and we're going to pray that he will have a desire to um bring the best out of her sometimes that you see um like just like on the news and stuff or just like you hear these stories that um men can be intimidated by their wives the husbands can be intimidated by their wives and we're gonna pray against that kind of competition and we're gonna just pray that he will see her doing well and want to know how to better her um will explore how to better her um in jesus name amen father lord we just commit these husbands to your hands oh god and we ask you lord that you will just give them the grace you will give them the grace to just encourage their wives and bring the be bring the best out of them oh god we ask you lord that you will just give them the you give them the grace to encourage their wives oh god to make her better oh god we ask you lord that any is any um any ideas any plan that the wife has that the husband be the one to encourage and push her foot further push her up her comfort zone push her into a place that she never thought she would um, go to we ask you in the name of jesus oh god that this narrative this rhetoric that there must be competition between um, spouses or will be breaking in the name of jesus we break it in the name of Jesus. There'll be no subconscious comparison in the name of Jesus. There'll be no subconscious of a conscious competition in the name of Jesus. We ask you, O oh Lord, that he'll be able to love her as, she's, as she needs to be loved. We ask you, O oh Lord, that he will have, you, you even give him new ideas to go all out and go all out in love for her. We ask you in the name of Jesus. For those who are married, give the husbands new ideas on how to love their wives. Give them new ideas on how to love the wives as you love the church may he love his wife according to your word according to your standard not below may he prioritize his wife above all things may wife may, may work not become may, may work not um, come before her but may she be prioritized and may she be loved as you love the church according to your word and according to your standard we ask in the name of Jesus. Thirdly, um, the word says, love his wife as um, husbands are to love their wives as he loves himself. So um, I think praying for this, um, I was now thinking about um, just like people have different backgrounds and just different experiences that can make that at times can cause one to grow up with a hardened heart or just a short or narrow perspective. So we're gonna pray for complete wholeness and restoration. We're gonna pray for healing traumas. We're gonna pray for maybe disappointments. We're gonna pay, pray that there'll be no residue and no baggage that be brought into their um, relationship as well. Um, sorry, marriage. Um, that no, no baggage we brought into the marriage. No baggage will into the marriage. And then um, along with that, as we're praying that he, um, that husbands are able to um, love, we're also going to pray that wives are also able to receive that love as well. Again, sometimes you do hear that women have, not just women, but anybody can have certain insecurities that prohibit them from receiving the love that they're, um, to receive the love they're actually getting. So we're praying, just to clarify, we're praying for complete restoration wholeness and completion anywhere that they've been hurt traumatized all those areas we're submitting them before god and we're praying that wives are going to be recipients of that love um and also believe and also accept that they are being loved um it won't be it won't be one of those things it's too good to be true no they too will be healed in the name of jesus amen Zama sika nama sunta libra hasha kante libra handu stibia rebo shi kalama sita ya baba hanta ya baba Lord we know you as the great physician zika ntele bo shi kata labra hanti li sataya Lord we ask you to go into the deep deep areas zika ntu skia mama and restore the mind and restore the heart of traumas of disappointments zika ntele bo hu shi mantele bahaya mama mandede where where 
their minds, where their, where their minds are full of hurt, full of pain, oh God, we ask you to restore in the name of Jesus. We ask you to heal in the name of Jesus. Zima sika tapalaba. They will not see that they will not see life through the um, pains of a hurt child. Riba shika taba. But they will see, they will see the they will see their wives, they will see life as they've put at the, as they've been called to in the name of Jesus. Zikelemo shitan telebrohu zakatayaba. Rende lamasukai. Zinte Lord, we ask you to heal their hearts of any disappointment, any past relationship hurts. There will be no baggage brought into marriages in the name of Jesus. We pray for complete healing and restoration. Even those who are married now, we commit husbands to your hands right now. And we pray for healing over their minds. Rebo shikatala mama healing over their hearts in the name of Jesus healing complete healing Rebo shikababa that he will be able to love his wife um, as you have called him to love as he loves himself Rebo shikatala maha we even pray that he genuinely loves himself that he will not suffer from insecure in inferiority complexes he will not be insecure but he'll be confident in the man you've called him to be Rebo shikelama santa yada retanta damasika yabada and we commit the wives into your hands that they will be able to receive the love. Jin talama suta they will receive love past insecurities. Zin talama sikaya that they too will be healed from baggages and traumas in the name of Jesus. Zikan telemo shin talamama that they will not project project trauma. They will not project fear. Reba shin talanu skitai re talanu skiteya in the name of Jesus. Zipa skotayaba we pray for the current marriages and we pray for the future marriages. Oh God that complete healing will take place. And if there is any marriage that is going through a difficult time in, um, as a result of these things, we ask your God that you will heal them and you will heal them speedily. May the hand of God rest upon these marriages in the name of Jesus. We ask you Lord, that there will be a distinction with these kingdom marriages and that of the world. That there there will be a difference we ask in the name of Jesus that we will not reflect society we will not reflect the media but we will reflect the word of God that we will reflect your heart towards marriage in the name of Jesus amen um um and then the next prayer point is that um, the two are joined as one. That was the latter part of the scripture. Um, based on the, um, Ecclesiastics chapter four, we're going to pray that God will be the third chord in our marriages or in your marriage if you're married. And um, we're going to pray for complete unity and cohesion. Um, and we're going to pray, yeah, we're going to pray for complete unity and cohesion. And we're going to pray that okay let's let me explain this first um and i'll put it back yeah let me say that so i was reading a book um last year it wasn't actually in relation to marriage but the last chapter did speak about um your like a like a kingdom spouse and um the book was on um, De um deborah in the bible and her husband is called lapidoth her husband is called Lapidoth, and Lapidoth translates as um, fan in the flame. So um, what the author was basically putting put forward is that you need to be with somebody that is going to flat fan what's inside of you, not kill what's inside of you. There's sometimes people... Um, Sometimes people get married and you don't hear of them again, or like they get married and everything you do, they were doing great in their singleness, you don't hear about it in their marriage. So we're going to pray that together... Um, that we will see that the ten thousand that they will chase the ten thousand that we will see that we're gonna pray that um there will be that we will marry um destiny help our destiny help we won't marry our enemy um we're gonna pray that um yeah just we will operate together and we're gonna operate in unity and cohesion in Jesus name amen.
Father Lord, again, we just come before you, these marriages, and we present them before you, oh God. We ask you that you'll be at the center of our marriages. We ask you, oh Lord, that we will push one another to, um, to, to you, oh God. That our marriage will not take us out of your will. But as we yield and as we marry our destiny helpers, oh God, we will get closer and closer to what you've, who you've called us to be. Oh God, I ask you to do an internal work in us, oh God. To reignite the gift that you have placed in us, to reignite the ideas you have placed in us. I ask you, O oh God, that what you've placed in our hands, O oh God, that we will use it to chase a thousand. And at the appointed time, may you send the right person, may you send the right person, O oh God, to fan the flame. May you send the right person to encourage us. May you send the right person, O oh God, at the appointed time that we will chase, that we will cause 10,000 to fly. That we will operate as one. That there will be no division. We ask you in the name of Jesus. That we will reflect your heart in this. That we will, we will better ourselves. Our conditions will not get worse because of marriage. But we will rise and we will soar in marriage. We, will, we ask you, Lord, that we will refute those lies and those arguments when they say that life stops when you are married. We ask you, Lord, and even sometimes when we've, um, you know, when you've been waiting for marriage for a long time, you kind of put your life on pause until you're married. Let's also just repent for that, um, for putting our pur um, purposes on pause, putting God's will on pause for the next person because life doesn't, you know, we can start now. We can start with what God is placing us now. So Lord, we're asking you for your mercy. We're coming before you, Lord, when we've fallen short of that, when we've put everything on pause because of marriage, oh God, or waiting for marriage, oh God. We ask you, oh Lord, that you will not allow time, time to be against us. And we ask you, oh Lord, that everything you've instructed us to, to do, that you will bring it back to memory in the name of Jesus. Amen. And um, finally, I just want us to just pray against um anything that may have just like caused or could cause separation in marriages. Um, So essentially, we're just praying for an extraction and a purge. Um, I don't know what this could be. It could probably just be like seeing things differently, having different priorities, um, just not operating as one, which, which we have just prayed. Um, sometimes family can be an issue. Hearing um, voices outside can be an issue that can cause separation. So we're going to pray that, first of all, that each part, each, each party to marry, to the husband and wife, will um, hear the voice of God, yield to the voice of God, and um, they'll not... They will not okay. Just based as the word says that the sheep will hear the voice and they're strange, they won't obey. Lord, we submit these marriages into your hands, O oh God. Lord, we ask you that every single one of us, married or not, that we will yield to your voice. We will yield to your word. That we will yield to you in the name of Jesus. That we will yield to you. That we will not hear the voice of a stranger. We will not hear bad advice. I pray for unity when making decisions. I pray for agreements when making decisions. And we ask anything that in a marriage that 
is causing this division. We ask it to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you will delight in these marriages in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that everyone here, every marriage represented here will reflect your heart and reflect what your word says concerning marriage. May it mirror exactly. May there be no difference. In Jesus' name, amen. And um, now we're going to pray for um, raising children. So I'm just looking down because it's on my phone now. But um, yeah, so we, and we initially just, we just prayed for um, unity and cohesion within um within um marriages and now we're going to pray that for children so um i'm going to read psalm 133 just a few verses but i'll read from the message version and it says how wonderful how beautiful when brothers and sisters get along sorry it's like a costly anointing oil flowing down um head flowing down head and beard flowing down Aaron's um, beard flowing down the collar of his priestly robes so we're going to pray for unity within the godly children that parents won't promote sibling rivalry that parents um will yeah parents won't promote sibling rivalry that parents will encourage their children to love one will teach them how to love one another in fact they will exemplify what um love is to their children um, and we just pray for unity with um, amongst um, siblings, amongst children. We're praying that they will encourage one another down. There will not be competition, and they will not, um, uh, yeah, they will not tear each other down. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father Lord, we commit children and um, we commit these children into your hands. Zima skura ba ba ba. The current the future the current children and the future children. Oh God, lima si kaya ba 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 sekeya ba ba. May we as parents exemplify love to them. Zima skura ba ba ba. Yi talama suta yi ba da ba ya. Rika talama si kaya ba ha. We pray for unity in the name of Jesus. Zikan telebo shi kada ba ha. We pray that our children will get along. Rebo shi kada ba han zeketi labra. We ask you, O God, that there will be no animosity among siblings there'll be no animosity amongst children that they will better one another that they will encourage one another they will pray for one another they will befriend one another it was this will not be a matter of jacob and esau there will not be war there will not be an animosity between them in Jesus' mighty name. Secondly, we are praying that um okay, so from the Bible we can infer that there is an onus placed on parents to raise um their children up in the Lord. And um up in the Lord and I'm going to read Matthew 19 14 and I'm going to read Amplified and it says um but he said leave the children alone allow the little ones to come to me and do not forbid or restrain or hinder them um for such for such as these is the kingdom of heaven composed so I want to focus on the part where it says do not forbid do not restrain or do not hinder them we're praying that parents will have the grace to encourage their children to explore God. They will have the grace and also the patience to teach their children about the things of God, that they won't rely on Sunday school and they won't rely on church. They won't rely on school, even if they go to a Christian school, that they will be equipped to teach their um, children about God. Um, in Jesus' name, 
Amen. Father, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, for the grace. We ask you for the grace to raise your children. We ask you for the grace to raise your children. To raise the children in the Lord. We will not allow society to raise our children. We will not allow social media to raise our children. We will not allow false rhetorics to raise our children. And we've been praying for creativity that will teach our children the Bible in new ways. In creative ways. Maybe it's through books, maybe it's through writing. And maybe it's through painting, maybe it's through walks in the park, but we will teach our children the ways and things of God. That our children will be excited about the things of God. That the ch our children will hear the voice of God from a young age. Just like Samuel. We will not be too tired to raise our children in the Lord. But this is what you have required of us. And we ask you for the grace. We ask you God that you will give us the equipment in the name of Jesus. That you will empower us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, Isaiah 54, verse 13, and this is um, NLT. It says, all your children, it says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord and great um, shall be the peace of your children. So I'm going to pray that children will encounter, well, this generation or the next generation of um, children will encounter the true shalom of God. And I'm sharing this prayer point because a couple of weeks ago, I was reading this article and essentially what it was saying is that children and teens nowadays are suffering with much more anxiety and um, anxiety complexes um, than they 20, 20 times more um, than 50 years ago, essentially. So yeah, 50 years ago, children um, and teens were not suffering with anxiety the way they are now. So we're praying that as they, um, so we're praying for our children that they will encounter the true peace of God in every area of their life. That when they go to school, they'll have peace. They will not be, um, they will not be bullied. And if they are, we'll have that ability to communicate with their parents. So we're praying for peace in every area of their life in Jesus' mighty name, that they will not be pressurized and they will not be intimidated and nor will they be oppressed. In the name of Jesus. That our children will not have to follow statistics. Our children will not have to follow the patterns of this world. That we submit their minds before you. And they will encounter the true shalom of God. They will encounter the peace of God. We speak over their neural pathways. Papa, and we declare peace, we declare peace, we declare peace in the name of Jesus. They will not be victims of oppression. They will not be persecuted for turning away from the world. But we ask you, Lord, as they pursue you, oh God, that you 
that your peace will pursue them in the name of Jesus. That your peace will cover their minds. Your peace will cover their minds in the name of Jesus. That they will have nothing to be anxious for. That they will not be victims of anxiety or timidity. But Lord, they will operate with soundness of mind. We thank you, Lord, for your word. That will not be victims of oppression. But your peace, your peace will pursue them in the name of Jesus. Um, and finally, based on Psalm 78, um, verse 6, it says that that they will, well, I'm just going to paraphrase, but they will, um, we're praying that children will come to know, serve, and love the Lord, and they're not going to be rebellious against the Lord. So we're praying that, we're praying for this as well, and we're also praying that they will stay um, in the faith, that they will stay um, serving the Lord. Sometimes you do hear that, Parents may be pursuing God and then children aren't. So I pray that that will not be the case for us. And we'll, we can also take time that if you know any family um, that are going through that their child are no longer in the Lord, let's just pray that we're going to call back. We're going to call them back as prodigal sons and we'll ask them that God will just um, restore their heart um, and basically rescue them. Um, in Jesus name. Amen. Zaka la brohuzi masketi la brahanta ye babaha. Lord, we commit our children into your hands. Zika para skuta ya bahan le bahan diata ya da bahan dori tata. That they. Oh God, Rima Masika Yababa will serve you faithfully to the very end. Rabba Sheke Lebroho Zakatata. They will serve you faithfully to the very end. Rubu Shantalamaki Katata Tayanta Lebrohus Gatai. Rekantia Mama. To the very end, oh God. Zimaskiya Mama. They will not slip away. Rema Shintalama Sika Yabaha. And right now we just take this time to intercede for any child that has lost the faith. We um but in the sea for any child that is no longer in the faith, we call them forth as a prodigal son and we say, come back home, come back home. We ask you, Lord, that they will encounter you as a father. As a father. They will encounter you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you will reignite their love for you, oh God. And restore and revive them once again. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, um, that's it from me. So I'm going to pass on to Lisa now. Um, so yeah. Good evening. Good evening. So we don't drop momentum let's just continue let's just use one minute to build ourselves in the most holy faith let's pray that our praise will not be in vain let's pray that these prayers will not be in vain as sometimes these are praise that you are planting the ground with we have been fasting some of these praise may not be your reality right now but these are prayers that we are using to water the seeds these are prayers that sometimes become anxiety and thoughts but we are watering the ground so let's begin to build ourselves as we continue to intercede for ourselves you can see for our members and our future children in the mighty name of jesus amen i just want to say if you are married and, you know, to the glory of God, you are blessed at every prayer point. Please remember your children as well. Pray these prayers into your children's lives as well. Hallelujah. I just want, I just felt led to say that. So just following up for what we've been praying about, Matthew 19, 310. Matthew 19, 310. And I will be reading the NLT version today. Some Pharisees came and tried to trap him with the question, should a man be allowed to divorce his wife for just any reason? Haven't you haven't you read the scriptures? Jesus replied, the the record that from the beginning God made them male and female, and He said, 
This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one, since they are no longer together but one. Let no one split apart from, from what God has joined together. I'm going to read verse four again. Haven't you read the scriptures, Jesus replied, the records from the beginning. And our first point is that God, that when, when it comes to marriage, that we will go back to the word of God. We will go back to the record. We have to remember that marriage is an institution of God. Yes, worldly people do it. Yes, there's civil partnership. Yes, there is um, common law. But marriage as we know it, as we are in it, and as some of us want to enter it, is an institution of Christ that we need to go back to the record. We need to go to the word of God. So the first prayer I want us to say is that God, bring the word of God into my remembrance when I think about my marriage, when I discuss my marriage with my friends, when I watch TV, whatever what I'm watching, Lord, may I have the discernment to say, aha, no, that is what the word calls marriage, but I know what my God says about marriage. I know what my God says about marriage. Yes, I see this. I indulge in this. I watch this. I, I follow these people on social media, but I know what God said about my marriage. That, Lord, that we will begin to pair ourselves and our marriages our current and future marriages and also what the word of God says and we'll be able to pair them together in the mighty name of Jesus we will not pay what society says about marriage we will not pay what society says about marriage right thank you Lord we will not even pay Lord what our parents say about marriage there I say this Lord Lord that the record that we will have of marriage is the record Lord of what the word of God says the record Lord, from the beginning Jesus said to them Jesus said to them in the book of Matthew that no we have to go back to the beginning we have to go back to Genesis we have to go back to Genesis really that Lord that in the area of marriage in our prayers in our prayers in our thoughts in our discussions in our engagement Lord with social media and tv god that we will be able to have the sermon and know okay that's what that person is going through but i know what god says about marriage we will not be tempered in the mighty name of jesus and that even goes for lord let's pray even even about the percentages about the facts about the facts uh, the fake news or the facts as trump used to say fake news that lord that even in those things god that we will refer back to the word of god in the mighty name of jesus as the word of god says in matthew about divorce that is what we will believe about divorce in the mighty name of jesus our thoughts will not be tempered but we will always know how to go back to the word of god in jesus name we pray amen and in this same scripture jesus said to them that this explains why a man leaves his father and ma a mother and becomes joint to his wife, and the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two, but one, let no one split. We want to pray for marriages that Christian marriages will be one again in the mighty name of Jesus, that there'll be a oneness, a wholeness in marriages in the mighty name of Jesus, and a gap in love that cannot be split, and a gap in love that should not, cannot be, should not be split to the word of God, going back to the word of God, that we will have a reverence, a belief again of marriage. I want us to pray again that in, that in the Christian death, that in the church, that there will be a believeness of wholeness in the mighty name of Jesus, a believeness of wholeness. Remember we're discussing things, Lord, that our personal values are influenced by finances, raising children, even conversation, God, that there will be, Lord, a wholeness in every single area in the mantle of Jesus, that no longer will Christian marriages say, oh, yes, we're one in this, but when it comes to finance, we are separate. We're one in finance, but when it comes to career goals, we're separate. But, Lord, Lord that wholeness, God, that, that wholeness, God, that you desired in marriage would be on our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those who are married, God, it will be on their marriages and their children's children's marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. That a gap in love that cannot be disturbed, that a gap in love that cannot be split will be among our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, Father Lord, that we will be an example Father, to the world again in the mighty name of Jesus. We will be an example of wholeness again in the, in, in the world in the mighty name of Jesus. And Amen. Amen. The instruction of marriage. First Corinthians 7. So first Corinthians 7. And we're going to just pray a little bit about, we've prayed about wholeness. And as we know, even when you're unmarried, the sum of wholeness, I would say, is about intimacy. And, I've, and, in, and in the marriage um, programs that we've all been to, we've always, um, They've always covered intimacy appropriately to the demographic that are that are coming in. That's very important to say as well. So um, 
So I'm going to start from verse three. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives of the wife gives authority over her body to her husband and her husband gives authority over his body to his wife. Do not be deprived. Do not deprive. We don't need to read into that. So we just want to say that God, please, that in, even in every area, even in intimacy, as we pray for wholeness, God, that Christians, Father Lord, will be able, Father Lord, to be fruitful in that area. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get my next scripture out. We just want to pray again for submission. Um, Ephesians 5, 21, verses 21 to, Ephesians 5, 21, but up all the way to 33. For, hus for wives, this means submit to your husband as the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as church is the head of the church. We just want to pray for those roles that Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will give men the wisdom to be heads of their homes again in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will give men the wisdom to be to be heads again in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, Lord, that the men, Lord, that have the desire, the men that have the desire, Lord, to have the framework, Lord, of the word of God in their marriages, Holy Spirit, Father, Lord, Lord, that they will really, Holy Spirit, be able to be the heads in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. That thing, God, in society, Lord, that attacks men, Father, Lord, that attacks man, men, Holy Spirit, Father, Lord, from being the head of their homes, Lord, from being the heads of their homes, Lord. That would not be Rishi Kataraba, um, our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. It would not be the men's portion in the mighty name of Jesus, God. But you will bring the boldness, the godly boldness back into men in the mighty name of Jesus. You will bring Rishi Kataraba, Daraba, Kutaraba. That boldness, Lord, Rishi Kataraba, that comes, Father Lord, that comes from being, Father Lord, the child of God, into men again, Father Lord. That when they speak in their homes, Holy Spirit, Father Lord, that leadership, Rishi Kataraba, Hendaraba, Hendaraba, that godly leadership, Lord, that you have anointed men from Father Lord, from the days of Adam will be their portion in the mighty name of Jesus Lord no more of our men feeling incompetent no more of our men feeling incompetent in the mighty name of Jesus I want you to pray for every man in your life Holy Spirit that you know that is married that you know that is waiting for marriage that they will not feel incompetent they will not feel incompetent they will not feel suppressed they will not feel suppressed in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will be empowered. I just want to share something quickly. There is a local authority at the moment that they are doing a, um, I'm actually part of it, thank God. They're doing a research and study about in the borough, why are men not engaging in services? And when I spoke to men, they said this, they feel disempowered by services. When they go to health, when they go to the health visitor, they feel disempowered. When they go for scans, the nurse is only speaking to the woman. And they are feeling what is the point. But we pray that that would not be the, our Christian men's portion in the mighty name of Jesus. That they would even have the confidence to even ask professionals questions about their unborn baby, about their wife. That they would even bring that authority into society in the mighty name of Jesus. And we also want to pray for the world as well. That the world will not see it. They will not, agenda, they will not make it an agenda because their man is asking a question about a woman's body. I had to tell you with style, tell off a woman in that meeting as well. He wanted to make it an agenda. I was like, actually, if man and woman are married, the man should be full free. We're here for men, the engagement of men. So we just want to pray as well for services, for society as well, that they will not prevent the will of God, which is for men to be the head in Jesus' name. Amen. Just before we pray about um the woman being a helper, we just want to go back to that prayer about intimacy. I think I have to be honest, I think I was a bit shy. So we, so we have to go back to that in the mind of them. And we just want to pray again, because again, it's about going back to the word of God. It's about going back to the word of God. So I have to put my shyness aside, God forgive me. Going back to the, to the manual of God in marriage that says husband and wife shall both give themselves to give themselves to each other and we pray for that in the mighty name of Jesus we pray for that in the mighty name of Jesus that instead of the world teaching 
our children, which we're going to pray about, and us about sex, that the Christ Christians will become bold because they will remember that it is of God, that even in their marriages, Lord, that that awkwardness, God, that awkwardness that sometimes people are transparent to speak about, Lord, will not be their portion in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that they will see it as a loving responsibility, Lord, to satisfy their wives and husband in a godly way in the mighty name of Jesus. And even when we even take away sex, God, even in nakedness, Father, Lord, in even sometimes the way that you feel even in a way sometimes that, that you feel not even worthy enough, not even beautiful enough, God, but they will realize, Lord, that it's not about that, Lord, that is about your, it's about your will in marriage, God, and we want to pray that, that Lord, that that area, Father, Lord, will be an area, Lord, that Christians have charge again in the mighty name of Jesus, that we take charge of that, Lord, that that demonic perversion that demonic perversion that demonic perversion holy spirit father lord that the enemy father lord has used father lord to cover this world with god christians lord who are in marriage god who are father lord who are having sex god will be able to take charge of that in the mighty name of jesus god we want to speak into society right now lord that that sexual perversion that sexual perversion god lord that the worldly people have taken maybe because christians that we find that every a bit shy to talk about God, that we will have boldness to maturely speak about it and to educate the world about it, God. But Lord, it will not only be about the word, but it will be even, Lord, within marriages, God, between man and woman, God, that there will be a freeness, a oneness, even in that area, Father Lord, that both man and woman will be full satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So going back to Ephesians um, 5.23, we just want to pray for women as well that women also will be able to submit to their husbands, that women will be able to submit. Again, as Annabelle says, there's always debates, even within friendships, we always talk about, oh, okay, but how do you submit? When do you submit? Should I submit when there's money? Should I submit when there's no money? You know, all of the talk that we all have in our yeah, kitchen table talk, as I call it. But we just want to pray that God will give us the wisdom. God will give us women. As we've prayed for the men to be their head, and they will be, in Jesus' name, that also, Lord, that how you have created us from the beginning to be a helper, Father, Lord, that we, Lord, will be reinstalled into that in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And we just want to pray also for the women, Holy Spirit, Lord, who have had to step up, who have had, had to be the heads, God, Father, Lord, that you reinstall into them and their children, because children are learning from this, and their children, God, that know that my role is to be submissive. My role is to be led. My role is to be the helper, Father, Lord. And Lord, as we have reinstalled men, Father, Lord, as being the head, God, we reinstall women being the helper in the mighty name of Jesus, God. And no more, Father, Lord, will women full father lord that they have to step up because nobody else steps up for them father lord lord sometimes you know we can this is not our experience but the fact is that is the experience of even in a christian day. but we just want to pray for healing and we also want to pray for reinstallment and wisdom around submission in the mighty name of jesus god lord that even in a series of questions, Lord, Father, that you will answer us in the mighty name of Jesus. You will teach all of us, Lord, how to be submissive, Lord, to them, to the heads of our home, Father Lord, where we will Lord that, that, Lord, that that purpose and that creation, Lord, that creation of women, Father, will be seen all over the world and in the church in the mighty name of Jesus. We also want to pray, thank you, Lord, that, Lord, that we even reinstall women as being the helpers of the church in the mighty name of Jesus, God. That even, Father, Lord, the church as an institution, Father, we'll go back to the time of God, Lord, the where husbands will encourage their wives, Father, Lord, not to only be helpers at home, but to be helpers of ministry and the church again. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we prayed about submission. We just want to just quickly. I don't want to go over what my um, what my sis has gone over. So First Peter three one seven. I'm going to start from verse. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourself instead with the beauty that comes from within the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. And in this verse, just because of context is very important, um, that um, this, this word was speaking of.
Just keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Wow. I'm sure she will recalibrate soon. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I think she told us to read from 1 Peter chapter 3. I will read and she will come back at some point to take over. 1 Peter chapter 3 says, Don't be concerned about the outward beauty or fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourself instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle, quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. Uh, this is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They put their trust in God. They put their trust in God uh, and accepted the authority of their husbands. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. Uh, without fear of what your husbands might do that is very very important in line with that which you're praying you want to pray that we'll be able to submit with, to our husbands women be able to submit to their husbands without fear in the name of the lord jesus without fear that he may take advantage in the name of the lord jesus come on ladies are you with me do you understand the scripture in the name of the lord jesus submit without fear submit trust in their authority in the name of the lord jesus trust in their leadership that they are men that god has their ear and their hearts in the name of the lord jesus that will be able to submit without fear in the name of the lord jesus pray in the name of jesus Marco Surapa Kiara Baba Shanta over to you, Lisa Kiara Baba Soroboko Soto Eshi Karapa Kaseke. I can't hear you. Okay, we just want to continue with that, Lord, that there will not be any fear of around women submitting to their men, to their husbands, to the head of their homes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We've already prayed about oneness, so I wouldn't pray about that. Um, Okay, so we're going to move on to um, children. And the first verse that I want us to really um, speak about and pray about is Luke 2, 41 to 52. I may read. Yeah, I may. Let's read all of it. So Luke 2, 41 to 52. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth. But Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first, but they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they discovered him in the temple, sitting amongst the religious lead teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who have heard him were amazed at his understanding and answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search, he said. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth from them and was obedient to them. And his mother stood all the, all the things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in the favor of all the people. So I'm going to lead a few prayer points from this. I always find this, prayer, um, this scripture very interesting because it proves that at 12, Jesus knew his identity. So let's start from there. We want to pray for our children that even from a young age, because we have brought them into the temple, because we have brought them, into Christ that they will know their identity in the mighty name of Jesus you know this is such an amazing thing when we look at the context of this society where we live in a world where you know the our identities of our children are being tampered with but at this point it was installed in Jesus that this is who I am to the point where he was even sitting with the leaders the scripture always um, always always amazes me he was sitting he, was, he wasn't sitting with, you know, the people that were listening. No, he knew who he was. He knew at 12. So we want to pray. We're gonna, we might go back. We might go start with Jesus and go back into parenting. But we want to pray that our children, 
our children because of the work that we are doing because of the oneness even between we've prayed between husband and wife because that is important because of the oneness between husband and wife because of the model that we are showing of agape love of submission of being the head that our children's identities will not be tampered with in this evil society in the mighty name of jesus that amongst their peers our children will know that they are meant to be in top sets if they are meant to be that that imposter syndrome that that unsureness of being will not be our children's portions in the mighty name of jesus that they will be firm they will be firm they will be firm in their identity in their role in their calling in their identity in their sexuality in everything to do with them that they if they will know where to sit and where not to sit they will know how to speak and how not even the boldness if you know me, you know I love bold people. Even the boldness of Jesus to say to his mom, mom, you should have known where I was. Is it not you that gave birth to me? It's you that the angel revealed. It's you that the angel revealed that of who I am. So I'm just playing the part. I'm playing I'm playing the part. Pass, pass over is over. It's time to get back to it. And that's how our children will be in the mighty name of Jesus. Even the example that I believe that God is even speaking to us now about is even with Christmas, things like Christmas, where it's become so consumers, it will be our children in school that will say, it's about Christ. It's about Christ. It is about Christ. That if I, I think that's even a an appropriate example of that. It's about Christ. Easter is not about Easter egg. It's about the the death and resurrection of my Christ, of my Lord and Savior. They will take position even in this young age in the mighty name of Jesus. Even in this young age in the mighty name of Jesus. That doesn't mean that Jesus wasn't a child. It doesn't mean he wasn't twelve. It doesn't mean he was out of um adult fight as, as as we call it it doesn't mean he was bigger than his boots yes amen and they shall not be bullied for it but he knew his position he was still a child which is important for us to hold our children should still be children but even in that god still gives them boldness and milk and milkness if parents can even laugh even the parents say that that you guys even laugh and say oh my gosh my child said that that is the same child that can tell other people about christ that is the same child that can be solid and founded and grounded in the identity in Christ. And I pray that for all of our children in the mighty name of Jesus, in their conversations, in everything they do, they will be grounded in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just wanna pray using that scripture, using that scripture, using this scripture. Um, I'm going back, I don't know where it is, Holy Spirit reminded me of when, even when um Joseph, when, when the angel came to Joseph, Holy Spirit came to, when God came to Joseph and they took Jesus, they took Jesus, Jesus to Egypt to guard him against what was going on, that we will be parents because you can't have this at 12. You can't have a child like this if you're not guarding that child, if you're not even being obedient, if, if you're not even being obedient, if you're not being obedient, that's why I said we're going to start with Jesus, then we're going to go back. If you, you yourself are not being obedient and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit and treating your child as, an, as the individual person as that child is, your child cannot, so to say, it, it, it is, I wouldn't say cannot, it's a strong statement, but they will find it hard to hard to be solidified in this society. So we just want to pray that as parents, that we will also be sensitive to the things that God has revealed to us, especially us who don't have children yet, but God has told us some things about our children, that we will not forget them when that time comes. But just like Mary and Joseph, just like Mary and Joseph, just like Mary and Joseph, we will remember we will remember we will be guardians of our children in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe that that's even the word that came from the Bible. We will be real guardians of our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes we want things that we don't. We're even learning that as, as well in a different context in church at the moment. Sometimes you, you want things that we want things that we don't work for. But I believe that we will be parents who are guardians and are working for the solidification for the solidification of identity in our children's lives. Yes open that God will open our ears and open our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus in every detail whether it's what school our children will go to whether it's how we should raise them how we should raise the firstborn second to um, different from the second born without causing conflict in every detail of our children's lives we will remember that the goal that the goal is for them to run their race in Christ that the goal is for them to live out their calling and because of that that will drive us in everything that we do in Jesus' name, even to the point where even when Jesus went, even when he, even when he went to the temple, they didn't say, oh, okay, yeah, after all, he's 
God, I've only told us who he is. So he's like, he's big enough. No, they went to look for him. They were worried. <laughs> they went to look for him. They were worried. There were still parents, even though he was Je oh, Jesus. Even though he was Jesus. I always remind people, Jesus was a baby. That's why I love Mary, did you know? Jesus was a baby. Our Lord and Savior was a, ba was a baby for a reason to show us. To, to really show us that he was man. And I pray and that even with our children that we will have that guardians, guardians, that even that we know that some of our children are called into ministry, some of our children are gonna be second to do that, but even though that we will know that everything is at stage and season and in every stage and season that we will have wisdom to raise our children in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen, amen. Just Isaiah 54, 13 to 14. I will teach all your children and they will enjoy great peace. You will be secure under a government that is just fair. Your enemies will stay far away and you will live in peace. I just want to pray for the peace of our children in this anxiety driven, um, anxiety -driven society, anxiety -driven society that we live, that our children will be at peace with us. Our children will be at peace with the Lord. That everything that we are installing, one thing that anxiety does, even society, is that it gives people like-minded memory loss that our children will be so much at peace that everything that we install in them with the word of god will be upon them will be in their essence in the mighty name of jesus let's pray against distraction let's pray against anxiety and distraction that doesn't allow peace to stay in the mighty name of jesus whether it's anxiety in the home whether it's anxiety in school whether it's from what they're watching holy spirit open our ears and give us wisdom holy spirit father Lord, to do away with those things Lord, so our children can really so our children can really live in great peace in the mighty name of jesus so our children can truly live in great peace in the mighty name of jesus the peace that surpasses all understanding that even some our children with different personalities the ones that are bold the ones that are milk the ones that are quiet lord that they will all have a sense of peace in them lord that it will even overflow into their teachers even in their peers in the mighty name of jesus and we want to pray that peace for ourselves because again it comes it flows from us it flows from us that institution that god has given the head the helper that we pray that we be installed that it will flow to our children in the mighty name of jesus our children father lord they will not be casualties of this society they will not be casualties of the negative impact of this society but they lord she can tell about that every good that you have for them in terms of peace and peace and stillness would be their portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the last prayer, Psalms 78, 6 to 8. So the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born, and they in turn would teach their own children, which is right at the beginning I said, if you feel like these prayers, you know, God has answered all of them, pray for your own children as well. So each generation is to set its hope anew on God, not forgetting his glorious miracles and obeying his commands. I want us to pray that the praise that we pray today will not only be for us, but will be for generations in the mighty name of Jesus. That our children's children's children, both the ones I pray, both the ones that God has used Annabelle to pray, that all of the praise that we've prayed will not only be for our marriages, will not only be for our children's lives, but it will be for our children's children's children in the mighty name of Jesus. That this new standard, that this standard of going back to the word of God in marriage, of going back to the word of God in parenting, will be a generational thing in the mighty to them of Jesus. We stand against that demonic transgenerational thing that is going on in society that has been going on in society and we stand on the word of god and we install that the next generation will know christ the next generation will know christ the generation coming from our children will know christ in the mighty name of jesus they will know peace they will know wisdom in marriage they will know intimacy in marriage there will know submission and headship in marriage in the mighty name of jesus it will be glorious our generations will be glorious it will be glorious. our marriages will be glorious our children children will be glorious in the mighty name of Jesus. It is not impossible for your child to be deep in Christ at five in Sunday school and be deep in Christ in 60 in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not impossible for there to not be, oh, I have to go back. I have to go back. I've been in the world. But there will be a consistency. There will be a consistency. There will be a consistency that will override us until the coming back of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. We the like One minute of thanksgiving for what God has done in our lives one minute of thanksgiving for the marriages that have been restored one minute of thanksgiving 
for the marriages that are modeling to our children what it is to be in Christ. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, God. And for those, Father Lord, who are in marriages, God, we thank you, God, for their marriages will be for eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those of us who are still waiting, God, we will continue to have the strength, Father Lord, to go back to the beginning. Lord, as, as, as Jesus said in Matthew, Lord, to know what you say and your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Annabelle and Lisa. Powerful time of prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we're going to pray. The Bible says, except the Lord builds his house, they labor in vain that build it. And we don't want to labor in vain. Would you make a declaration? I will not la I will not labor in vain. Come on, make a declaration. My labor will not be in vain. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That's Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, the workers of the the work of the builders is wasted. It means that there is a labor but you want to make sure that your labor is not in vain. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, the Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they, they, the workers, the builders, uh, they labor in vain. Uh, we don't want to labor in vain. ESV says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who built it labor in vain. Uh, the labor of the husband will not be in vain. The labor of the wife will not be in vain. The labor of the children will not be in vain. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, Apostle Paul himself, that means Psalm 127, that was verse 1. Like unless the Lord builds the house, those that built it labor in vain. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, would you go to Matthew chapter 7 with me? The Bible says in verse 24, Matthew 7 verse 24, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock he can't and the rain fell and the flood came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock i know they're talking about the foolish ones later but i don't want to talk about the foolish ones because we choose to be wise we choose to build our homes on the word of god we choose to build our homes in obedience to the word of god in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're not building on trends. We're not building on traditions. We're not even building on preferences. Can I talk to you? We're not even building on personal preferences. We're building on Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Anybody with me this evening? In the name of the Lord Jesus. We are building mantorobo based on on the word of God in obedience to the Christ, in obedience to the Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want to show you something. First Corinthians, I believe, is chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 10, the Bible says, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. No one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. Anyone married here gone through fire? Anyone married here gone through fire in their marriage? Yes, sir. the same person you were looking at uh, or googly eyed uh, all of a sudden in your marriage, there is fire. There is fire. There is fire. In Matthew chapter seven, if you look at the wise and the foolish one, the truth is they went through the same test. The rain came, the storm came. Are you with me? The wind came. 
those things will come, but how you build will determine whether your own building will stand. I want you to pray for yourself, pray for your husband, pray for your wife, ask the Lord, help us not to build in vain. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the wisdom to build our homes in a way that stands the tests of time, stands the tests of life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you may be married now. I want you to go and say, God, if there's anything in the foundation of my marriage that is causing my building to shake, anything in the foundation of my marriage that is working against that which we intend, in your mercy uproot it. In the name of Jesus, ask the Lord to reinforce your foundation. Those of you that are looking to marry, I want you to ask God, help us to set the right foundation. In the name of the Lord Jesus, help us to be built on Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus, help us not to go with trends. Help us not to go with preferences. Help us not to go with traditions. But Lord Jesus, we build our marriages. We build our families. We build our homes on you, O God. Father, we want to be wise. We pray, God, that you give a husband's wisdom, godly wisdoms, and how to be husbands and how to be fathers. I pray for the wives. You give them godly wisdom on how to be wives and how to be mothers. I even pray for the children, God, that you give them godly wisdom on how to be children to their parents. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, that our homes will be built on you again and lord jesus not only will our homes be built on you you are the master builder your word says except the lord build the house they labor in vain that build my god i ask that you will build our homes in the name of the lord jesus and father as you build our homes we declare in the name of the lord jesus that no weapon formed or fashioned against us shall prosper no weapon formed against the marriage no weapon formed against the parental relationship no weapon and formed against oh God the family unit as whole none of that will prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus we decree and declare every witchcraft that is selling families to slavery to sorcery to prostitution to whoredom we come against you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus and we declare because we are built on Christ and the blood of Jesus speaks on our behalf our families are exalted we declare our homes are exempt from the evil of the day the blood of jesus ah ikator rebekia whoever out of bitterness has projected ikata their own experience over your homes i declare they fall in the name of jesus i declare every mantoku shata word spoken against the stability of your home i don't care if in the family it has been running for generations i declare you are exempt because the blood of jesus exempts you in the name of the lord jesus i don't know whether you have a friend or you have a cousin Manto Rebeke, I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus an exemption, an exemption, an exemption by the blood of the Lamb, an exemption. Irapa Sokurapa, Eskata, Enzado, the blood of Jesus as a covering over your homes. The blood of Jesus, I decree and declare that no weapon formed or fashioned against your marriage. Ah, Ikato, Esgederebre Enta, Inananda Labra Andoshkete, Father, even every whisper spirit of the enemy to bring suggestions every wrong spirit that was trying to access any member of the family I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that they have no entrance oh my God oh my God oh my God oh my God just yesterday I was reading this book and in this book 
a man brought his children to the pastor and said, ma'am, we are in trouble. And the woman said, what's going on? And apparently the story says that the children confessed to their, hello, hi, the children confessed to their dad that when they went somewhere, someone gave them a suite and initiated them into witchcraft. Talk to me, initiated them to witchcraft and the evil that the family was going through was because their children were being used by the enemy against the household i pray for you you will not be you will not be careless uh, when it comes to your children in the name of the lord jesus uh, your children will be filled with the spirit of god uh, and they will reject uh, they will reject strange spirits uh, they will reject any initiation of the enemy in the name of the lord jesus uh, every irapasukata we cover our children in the blood of Jesus. We decree because there is no junior Holy Spirit. The Bible tells me in the book of Luke chapter 1 that John the Baptist grew strong in spirit. And then in Luke chapter 2, the Bible tells me that Jesus grew stronger. He also grew strong in spirit. We pray for our children that our children grow strong in spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Manta libra anto. Our children are strong in spirit. They reject, they reject evil. They reject evil. They reject uh, demonic indoctrination. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, because our children are taught of the Lord, they will reject anything that is antichrist. Every indoctrination coming through media, coming through education, our children will reject it. They will stand for righteousness. Father, we even pray, covering our children, that they will be of your spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Bind them together with the cord of love. Father, let the love of God be made manifest in our homes again. The true love of God. Father, the narrative from media that children are separated from parents and parents don't understand children. We reject that in our homes. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare that the hearts of the children are turned to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers are turned to the children. I pray God in our family unit, the love of God, the same unity between the Godhead, the Zimarasa, the unity between the Son and the Father will be, O oh God, in our homes, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, for your daughter quoted that scripture, how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together in harmony, Lord Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of strife out of our homes, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I rebuke strife, I rebuke strife, Get out of our homes in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. We raise a standard against you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. Hey, hey, my sheep hear my voice and a strange voice they will not obey. Father, every voice of the stranger that is trying to manipulate the minds of your sons or your daughters, manipulate their emotions against each other, even manipulating their understanding and revelation of Christ. I rebuke it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, as it pertains to the understanding and revelation of the Christ, I pray God that there shall be unity. Did your word not say, he can't tell about that you gave us, oh God, the fivefold, uh, for the equipping of the saints, uh, so that they can do the work of the ministry till we all come to the unity of the faith. Father, as it pertains to our homes, uh, let us come into the unity of the faith uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, that we will not be divided by doctrine in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we will not be divided in our homes. Uh, spiritually, we will not be divided. Physically, we will not be divided. Emotionally, we will not be divided. Father, bind us together. Spirit, soul, and body. We resist the enemy. We push down darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. 
Elanta bia kondiri arante reberento shkai rebriande ria babanta dia kaskuta iskai iskanti dia ronte ante liabai father ikai that you will raise up again families mande rebebe kuta raba that reveal Christ upon the earth akendo shata isagade zegade zikadoi ina na 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 say would you raise up families and homes that will be embassies o God of heaven, upon the earth, my God, we will not mirror society, I we will mirror heaven. Would you silence the voice and would you cut off the influence of the world, cut off every ungodly demonic influence over the husbands, over the wives, over the children? and father let each member of the family be influenced led filled by the spirit of the living god in the name of the lord jesus inanta bakoshai rebi satai Father, would you grant wives favor with their husbands? Just as, oh God, Esther found favor with her husband, the king, I pray, that women will not fall out of favor with their husbands. Father, in your wisdom, you said that the husband should love their wives, oh God. As Christ loved the church, I ask you, oh God, that the wives regardless of how long they've been married will not fall out of favor rather i pray an increase of favor with their husbands in the name of the lord jesus and i pray my god that the husbands will not lose the respect of their wives father i pray that their wives will wives will respect their husbands in the name of the lord jesus father recalibrate us back to the pattern of the christ recalibrate our homes back to the pattern of the christ that children will obey their parents and the Lord for this is right and parents will not grieve their children father we ask for the wisdom of God to make our families thrive oh God and to reveal you in the name of the Lord Jesus Oh, bless the homes, my God. Daddy, bless the homes. Bless them, oh God, bless them. Father, bless their unions. I pray that families, again, will be fruitful. They will multiply. They will replenish. They will subdue. They will have dominion. Father, let families connect to your divine purpose for them in the name of Jesus. Let our families be named after you. Father, kingdom purposes of families be revived in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Eh, hey, haha, for that husband, Ikatoko Sukata, that has drawn away from the Christ, we call you back in the name of the Lord Jesus. For that wife that has drawn away back from the Christ, we call you back. Ikaze Rabha, let Christ be again the center of our homes and let the joy of the Lord flood our homes in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory be to Jesus. If you agree, amen. I'm so sorry. I think I left you guys for a second there and I went to pray, but I hope you were able to follow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Love. Oh my God, be a channel of love in your home. Love your children, hug them, speak life to them. Love your husband, love your wives. Okay, love, 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 and prophesy. Come on, you gotta be one that prophesy. You build in the spirit so you can see it in the physical. You gotta be one that puts the word of God in your mouth. Declare, this is a happy home. Declare, we love one another. Declare what you want to see, okay? Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Would you type in the comments, prophesy, which means to speak the word of God. It means to speak the word of God over your home come on declare your husband is the head of your home declare in the name of the Lord he's the spiritual head he's the, he's the financial head he's the prophesy you speak what you want to see declare my husband loves me as Christ loves the church are you with me declare I submit to my husband amen make it 
prophesy, prophesy, declare this home. We are blessed. We are so blessed in this home. We are fruitful. We multiply in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on. We come on. You got to prophesy. We are fruitful. We multiply. We replenish. We subdue. We have dominion. My union with my husband is blessed. Come on. We are, we are, we are loving. Love is not a taboo. It's not hard. We freely love in the name of the Lord Jesus. We love in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are sacrificial. We are understanding. We are patient. Our love is kind. Our love is patient. Are you with me? You begin to prophesy. Don't get tired of prophesying. In the middle of the night, get up as you're going to the loo. Prophesy in the name of the Lord Jesus. Declare no stranger. No stranger will come into our union. No strange woman, no strange man. In the name of Jesus. Not just in the physical, in my dreams. No strange man, no. Sh come on, you got to prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Don't be careless. Don't be careless. Pray and prophesy. Glory to Jesus. All right. Then let me keep you here till 5 a.m. in the morning. All right. God bless you. Your homes are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus.